I am sorry, Hex is not a Ponzi scheme. I've made so many videos about Hex, very bearish videos, why the Hex Ponzi scam goes to zero, the Hex Ponzi scam is collapsing, the Hex cult destroys people, or even this one, Hex is a scam, Pulse Chain is a scam. Now this video is going to correct the Ponzi scheme allegations. And I'm going to do this based on a comment that has been left on one of the Hex videos. Let's talk about the Hex tokenomics fundamentally. And let's go to this rather complex topic together. When interest is paid on a certificate of deposit, this is what Hex says is underlying its tokenomics, that payment does not come from newly printed money. Banks pay CD interest from their earnings from lending. Loaned money by a bank may be newly created, but a bank that loaned money gets written off again as loans are paid off again. The existence of a CD, of a certificate of deposit, affects a bank's ability to make loans in that it is counted as an asset to determine if a bank is solvent, but a bank still needs to take money out of the economy to pay the interest on a CD. And while a bank is doing that, if it's not making new loans, CD interest payments are neutral to inflation. So this is setting the stage of the comparison between traditional finance, certificate of deposits, and now HEX certificate of deposits. Where are they different? And so the comment goes on. I would not call HEX a Ponzi because Hex as a system prints new tokens, whereas a Ponzi cannot print new dollars or generally any asset that is the underlying currency of the Ponzi. Now, this is an interesting distinction. What is a classical Ponzi scheme doing? A Ponzi scheme takes an investor's money and then pretends that that investment compounds pretty fast, right? It says this investment makes you 50% per year. Now, the way those 50% are paid is by new people's money, right? People that enter the system again. And so what a Ponzi is actually doing is they're creating a hidden hole in their balance sheet. They say we've got that much assets and they're compounding by that much, but they're actually taking money away to pay this interest. There's a hidden gap, so to speak. The Ponzi scheme isn't printing dollars, but it's pretending the existence of a value that's not really there. It's hiding this hole in the balance sheet. Now, Hex doesn't do that. And so the comment continues. A Ponzi cannot print new dollars, but that does not mean Hex is not a kind of scam. Ironically, calling Hex a certificate of deposit is actually the scam, in that Hex is just an ever-inflating collectible token that is being marketed as functioning like a certificate of deposit, which can make people think that the interest they earn is not inflationary or dilutes the relative holdings one might have of the collectible. So what's going on? You buy your hex, you stake your hex. If you stake it for longer than the average staker, then you should be benefiting from this dilution. This is, by the way, many, many years. If you stake it for shorter or you don't stake it at all, then you're losing from that ever increasing hex supply. Now let's finish the last part of this comment because afterwards comes a very important distinction. The distinction between tokens that are held in wallets and the actual circulating supply. It's very important for hex. So here we go. It always bothered me that people get excited about earning tokens when the income is pure inflation. I think a better way to think of it is to view what happens to your relative holdings. If every person holding a currency earns, say, 10% more tokens, then their relative holdings remain the same and they should view themselves as having made no gains in value. Assuming people continue to view the market cap of that collateral like it ought to be some fixed value, that would be the case. If you view it that way, there should be no reason to think that the market cap should rise other than the thing getting more popular. If the marketing says otherwise, that is scammy. Now, here's the problem. We've seen this with even faster inflating tokens such as Titano, for example, that had many tens of thousands percent of APY due to token inflation. Same thing, but simply just developing faster, right? You can basically fast track the development of HEX by simply increasing the inflation. So here is how this works. You've got on the one side, a liquidity pool or many of those liquidity pools, right? And there is HEX on one side, and then maybe a stable coin, the US dollar on the other. And the relationship in that liquidity pool between the number of HEX tokens versus the number of US dollars determines the HEX price. So if you are swapping your USDC into HEX, you're putting in money over here 
and you're taking out hex tokens over here. So the relationship of hex to dollars gets in favor of hex, so the hex price goes up. Now, how does inflation here impact this whole game? So let's say you have a wallet over here. And let's say other people have wallets too, right? You're not the only hex investor. Let's say we've got a few wallets and you've got one hex token. Let's say the other wallets for simplicity also just have one hex token. Okay. So this one line represents one hex token. So we've got a few hex tokens here in this pool and we've got a few hex tokens here in those different wallets. Now the inflation only affects the staked wallets. It does not affect the liquidity pool. So let's say we now wait for 10 years. Okay. Nobody does anything, but here the wallets now have way more hex tokens. Okay, they're able to redeem. They all deposited at the same time. They all have the same number of extra hex tokens out here. And nobody bought or sold the hex token in those 10 years, right? Let's simplify this. We want to simply just show the tokenomics. Now, what happens to the market cap in this case? And what happens to the price? The price does not change. The price is the relationship between the hex tokens and the dollars in the liquidity pool. Because nobody has sold so far and everybody has more tokens, all the people at staked, they feel richer now. The market cap of hex actually went up. The price didn't change because nobody swapped, but the market cap went up because now there are more hex tokens around and market cap is number of hex tokens times its price. The price is unchanged. The price is determined in the liquidity pool. And so there is this big party now, right? We all waited 10 years. We are all now richer. We have five times more the hex tokens. This is a great setup. But now comes the problem. Hex is not a classical Ponzi, but it has the central property of a Ponzi. The value transfer works differently, right? There are now new tokens. This doesn't happen in a Ponzi scheme, but the central characteristic of a Ponzi scheme is this gap of value, right? Pretending there is more value there than is actually the case, making people feel richer than they actually are. And on top of that, Ponzi schemes also reward the people that get in earlier and that sell earlier, but more on that later. Actually, why later? Let's go to this now. So we are here, the party is on, the hex price is unchanged and everybody has way more hex tokens. Everybody feels richer. Now comes the doomsday. Somebody needs money. And here is Mr. Clever who actually wants to now cash out of this. Mr. Clever decides to sell all his hex tokens. Let's take those hex tokens away and instead take the sweet dollars. Okay. The sweet dollars move to Mr. Clever and the additional hex tokens hit the pool. Now, because of the compounding, it's not just one hex token that hits the pool now, it's all of those compounded hex that hits the pool. So what happens to the price? The price before, when everybody was just waiting for those 10 years, it was stable. Nobody bought and sold. If somebody at the very beginning sold, where they just had one token, the price would only go up down a little bit, right? It wouldn't really move much. But because of the inflation, this guy has now all of these tokens and so the price crashes. It goes down a lot. And so the first person that exits the system, he gets all the value from this liquidity pool. And the others that felt rich before, they are left holding the bag. So the value that everybody thought is there before the first person sold, it suddenly disappears because the one person that now got all these inflated tokens, once they go to the market, they crash everything down. So you could take all kinds of analogies here, right? But what I like to do is why not draw this slightly differently? So how about we add a few lines over here? What does this now look like? I know my drawing is not the best, but what could this be? These could be chairs. This is a game of musical chairs. The music stops playing once the first person sells. So you want to do the exact opposite in this game that most people think is right. Most people think you should be staking for as long as possible because then you get diluted less and you hold more ownership of the grand total. But that's actually not the optimal strategy in this game. The optimal strategy is to stake shorter than the average and to sell out earlier because then you take out all the value from the liquidity pool. But the value accrues to the first seller and this is true for any cryptocurrency. But when you've got a lot of inflation in there, this effect gets 
magnified by multiple x, right? Depending on how big the inflation is. So is hex a classical Ponzi? Maybe not. We could call it a Ponzi 2.0, the next best thing to the game of musical chairs.